If you're still using Notion the slow way, then you're wasting hours every single week. As Notion keeps releasing updates, people who learn the shortcuts and tricks first end up working faster and smarter. So in this video, I'll go through five tricks that will make you instantly quicker in Notion. Subscribe for Notion tutorials, let's dive in. By the way, in this video, we'll be using my headquarters template, but all the tips will work if you have your own system or if you're a headquarters user looking to make it even more powerful. So let's scroll down here and go to my life buckets, for example. And what I'm going to do here is click on, uh, let's just say fitness. On this page, I can see all of the relevant tasks, notes, and projects. What I'm going to do here is write my life goal. So this is what I want my life to look like. Let's say I want a six pack. Let's say I want to work for myself. And let's say I want to spend uh, a lot of time with friends, for example. But what's difficult here is, let's say I do this exercise once. What we need to do is have this at the top of our mind. So we keep being reminded of this. So what we're going to do here is forward slash and then write sync, S-Y-N-C. Here we can see a sync block. I'll click here. And what we can do is simply highlight this and drag and drop this into this box here. As you can see, it has this red border around it. That means that this is in the sync block. And anything you put into this sync block can appear on another page. So here you can see copy and sync. And what I'm going to do is simply copy this, click away. And now I can put this anywhere else I want. So let's just say I want this really on the top of my mind. I can put this here at the top of the page simply by doing command V. And now I have this sync block here at the top. And if I add anything here, loving relationship, there we go. If I add that here, it will also appear in this sync block here. So anything that we change in this sync block appears on the other one because they are synced. And what we could do is have this sync block appear in places where we might forget what we're working towards, such as uh, if you have a business, for example, I'm sure you might forget, hey, what am I actually working towards? Having this here at the top of the business page might really help you out. But not only is this useful for obviously lifestyle goal, but this could be useful for more practical stuff that you need quick access to, things you want to remember and you want appearing in a bunch of different pages. Let's say you want something at the top of your time tracker page and also on the top of your habit tracker page, you could do that in a sync block. This can save you time, but also help you with things that you might need to remember. All right, for skill number two, again, it doesn't matter if you're using headquarters or your own system. What I'll do here is just add a page and we'll call this task one. How can someone be this creative? And what we're going to do here is add a property. And this property here is going to be a number property. And I'm going to just call this EST, E-S-T. And this here will be the estimated time to do a task. See, one of the best ways to work faster in your system is to tell yourself how long this task should take. See, if we give task one here an estimated time of 30 minutes, when we're doing our time tracking, Hopefully this should match up and be 30 minutes or at least close. And that's because our brain wants to match these together here. It's called Parkinson's law. The idea is that work will take the amount of time that's been scheduled for it to be completed. So if you give yourself 60 minutes, guess what? It's probably going to take 60 minutes, but obviously you want to be realistic here with the estimation. A thing that's helped me with stuff like this is let's say I had task two here and it was in the same bucket, let's just call it business, and they were both to do with a fake project, project one. So let's say this task two here is a similar task to task one, and let's say it took me 45 minutes as an example, and I did this a while back, just as an example. If I'm wondering, hey, how long will task one take because I want to give a good estimate, what I could do is scroll down and go to my time tracking page, and here I could see, oh, okay, this task two, which is quite similar to the one I'm going to do, took 45 minutes. And this will help me with accurately guessing for my Parkinson's law. So then I could say, you know what, I'm guessing this will take 45 minutes. And what happens is if you've done this time tracking enough, you're almost going to guess it down to the minute. And personally, what I found is after a month or honestly, even a week of doing this, if you have enough data in your time tracking page, you'll be able to guess the estimated time for any task almost down to the minute. And honestly, you will save so much time in Notion simply by giving yourself an estimated amount of time because now you are no longer wasting time. And that's why skill two is using Parkinson's law. Now, if you haven't used formulas before, it's a really underrated feature in Notion. Let's click here on formula. Now, these can be a bit scary. I totally get that. But now AI can help you write it but I'll make it even easier for you. Simply paste this here. So what this formula here is saying is if the estimated time is over 120 minutes, then label the task as deep work. If the estimated amount of time is under 10 minutes, then label it as a quick task. 
If the estimated amount of time is between 10 and 120 minutes, then label it as a shallow task. And then here we'll click on done. So you can find this in the description to copy and paste. So let's just add the estimated amount of time of 130 minutes. As you can see, it now comes up with deep work. And then let's add this one here of uh, 60 minutes. It comes up with shallow work. And then let's say task three here is a five minute task. It comes up with quick task. So these are automatically being added. Now this can be a really useful way to not have to fill in the state manually, but it can be done as a formula instead. So if you're a headquarters user and you don't want to use the state, you can click here and now simply do hide. I wouldn't delete it in case you want to use it. Plus that column is connected to the personal database as well. But this here can be an easy way for this to be sorted automatically if you're filling out an estimated column. And this here will help you with one main thing for working faster in Notion. See, I have a focus rule where I can only have two deep work tasks per day. Because if you're doing, let's say, three or four deep work tasks in a day, the next day you're going to be burnt out and you won't achieve anything the next day or probably the day after that. So you would have achieved more if you just did two deep work tasks on Monday, two deep work tasks on Tuesday, and two on Wednesday. That's six deep work tasks. See, to make progress faster, sometimes you have to work sustainably. And this formula here can help you out with that. And that's why tip three is to use this formula. Let's say you're on a website and you think, man, I would love to save this so I can go through it later. But now what you can do is use the Web Clipper tool. So what we'll do is go up here and click on this button here. And here we can say, where do we want to save this page? So let's just call this the Notion website. And here I could say, add to. So where do I want to add this page to? And I'm going to search up my learning. That's for the headquarters users out here. That will appear in this database here. So now when I click on save, now on the resources page under not finished yet, here you can see the Notion website. And obviously you can then add all of these different things, such as the type, the status, and the review. And I found that this web clipper here is a really easy way for me to add videos as well to my resources. That's why skill number four is to use the web clipper Chrome extension. So I have task one, task two, and task three. Let's just say that this one's urgent, this one's not urgent, and this one here is urgent. If I scroll down and I have a bunch of different tasks in my week, how am I meant to know which tasks here I should be stressed about? Well, I could click here on a task and see, oh, this one here is urgent. Or we could save you time in a lot of clicks just by clicking here on settings and then here clicking on conditional color. This is a new feature and it's really, really useful. We'll click here on new color setting. And here you can say, where do I want the color setting to come from? So for this one, we will do the urgency. And now you can see task three and task one are red. And that's because this urgency here is red. Now, if you don't want to see the color based on urgency, you could see it maybe based on importance or you could see it based on the state. What we could do is change this conditional color setting and we'll delete this color setting and we will change it instead to the state. So now we have blue, white, and yellow here. So I can easily see if I have two flow tasks because I'll have two blue tasks on the day. And that's five ways to work quicker in Notion. If you like the look of this template and you want to check out the full tour, then click on this video here. It's built to be a true productivity hub. Click on this video here to see the full tour.